Hello everybody and welcome to my podcast, Unwind and Knit With Me. My name is Lisa and I'm coming to you from Christchurch in New Zealand and I'd like to say a big welcome to everybody who is joining me today. This is my podcast where I talk all about my knitting and yarn and patterns and what I've been up to um, in this amazing little knitting community that we've got. Um, very exciting. So this is episode 42 and today is Friday the 9th of May. So um, if you are an existing viewer and you are returning, welcome back and thank you. And if you are new to my channel, welcome and please subscribe. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, that just helps my channel get a bit of recognition from the big crazy world that is Meta and Facebook and YouTube. So if you've already subscribed, thank you. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook as A Mind to Knit. And I also have an, on, an online store, which is unwindandknit.com. And I also open here to the public on most Saturdays or by appointment. So you can contact me through my website, unwindandknit.com. So I think that's all the admin -y things. Oh, I do um, put show notes, so anything I refer to in the way of patterns and yarns or podcasts or resources, I um, make reference to all of those in my show notes. Um, so you should be able to find those in a link below. I did just want to acknowledge um, the terrible fires that are taking place in Canada. And I know that parts of the United States has also been affected by all the smoke um, and the, and the, the yeah, the smoke is <laughs> what it is. Um, and I just want to say that from over the other side of the world here in New Zealand, we are hearing about it on the news and our heart goes out to you all. And I wish you all well. Um, natural disasters, uh, when Mother Nature unleashes, we know how devastating that can be. So whether it's flood, fire or earthquake, um, yeah, so stay strong, stay resilient and I hope you are all safe. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention is tomorrow, Saturday the 10th, is World Knitting Public Day. So um, I hope everybody's got a plan of meeting somewhere, whether it's in a cafe or a public library. Um, I know some people in my town here in Christchurch um, are just going to be sitting outside their local yarn stores and knitting. So um, I hope everyone gets out there and just spreads the love of knitting. I will be here in my shop um, from 10 to 4. So if you are around town, pop in and say hello. And I'm going to be here serving in my shop, but also just knitting with a cup of coffee. So, yeah, that's just... I needed to acknowledge that world in, uh, sorry, World Knitting Public Day tomorrow. Um, now, I really do think that's all my ad many things. So I will get into a bit of knitting. I'm really excited because I actually have a guest speaker with me here today who is going to join me to talk about um, crocheting and what's taking place in the world of crocheting. So I won't say any more about that because um, she will be joining me shortly. What I am wearing, um, since I saw you last time, I have completed my Love Note by Tin Can Knits. So this is um, the pattern, which I'm sure most of you would have know, would know of or heard of. This is the second love note I've knitted. Um, and the first one was probably about three years ago and I never wore it. I knitted it and I gifted it to a friend. Um, after finishing, I felt it was a little bit too cropped for me and she loved it. So um, it went to a good home. So it's been on my radar for a long time to knit another one. And I also wanted to knit a black one. So I have double stranded um, a fingering weight merino with a silk mohair in black. The brands escape me, but they were just um, commercial brands that you can buy in your local yarn store. So just a fingering weight, four ply um, yarn, double stranded with a mohair. I'm super happy with this. 
um, I did the size large and after blocking it, I was a little bit scared that I'd gone too big. I probably could have done the medium, um, but now that I'm wearing it, I, I love it. I'm really happy with the fit. Um, I did the three quarter sleeves as called for in the pattern. Um, I did the short row shaping at the back to give it a bit more length and I'm super happy with it. And I'm going to insert a photograph um, of me wearing it. One of those awkward moments where I have filmed myself modeling it, um, which I'm never comfortable with, but I wanted you to see it uh, finished. So I'll insert that video right now for you to see. Okay, hey, so that was my love note all completed. Um, and like I said, I'm really happy with it. And I think it would be um, a really nice beginner pattern. It's the lace work wasn't too difficult. The charts were quite easy to read and I would highly recommend it if you haven't already done one. I know a lot of people that have done several. Um, it's a bit like the ranunculus. It's one of those patterns that once you've got one, you sort of want a second and a third in your wardrobe. And I, I get that now. I get why. it's. Um, I think I get a lot of wear out of this. I am going to welcome Gail now, um, my guest speaker. And then after the interview with Gail, I am going to insert some photos and videos of these beautiful blankets that we're going to talk about um, spread out so you can see them in all their glory. And then I'm going to come back to you and I'm going to talk about my whips. I have um, a couple of whips that I've made some good progress on. I also have a couple of um, things that I'm ready to cast on, a couple of new cast ons that are in that are on my radar. And then I'm going to do a shop update for you. Uh, next Sunday, the 18th of June, here in Christchurch, I'm going to be attending um, Wool Feast, which is our annual, it's like a market day for traders. Um, so that's at Pioneer Stadium next Sunday. So I've, I've got a really busy week ahead of me preparing for that. And um, I'll talk a bit about that at the end as well. So I hope you enjoy my interview with Gail and we will welcome Gail. Hello, Gail. Hi. Um, I'd like to introduce you all to Gail. Gail has come today to be one of my guest speakers. And Gail is from Hands On, which is a yarn and quilting store in North Canterbury. So it's only about a 15 or 20 minute drive out of Christchurch. Mm -hmm. Beautiful big shop. And Gail is a teacher there. And I have invited her today to talk a bit about crocheting. Um, crochet is something that I'm a complete novice at. Um, granny squares is my limit. <laughs> but I was so taken and so inspired by what Gail has done um, that I wanted to her to come along and share it with us. So welcome. Thank you. And yeah. I'm going to start by asking what you're wearing. Ah. So we can't go on to crochet without <laughs> yeah. talking about that. This one is um, called Corvus. Um, it's in a four ply and I just loved all the, the detailing. It's all done on a yoke and then you do um, short German short rows to join it all up. Yep. Yeah, it was just a fascinating knit yeah. and beautifully written pattern. I think it's I've got it's it. a beautiful jersey. It's got really beautiful stitch definition yeah. and the lace works. And, and this is basket weave. Yeah, yeah, it is. It comes down to a point and a point at the front, a point at the back. So it's yeah. got a bit of everything. Mm. It's got um, basket weave, it's got lace work, it's got yeah. bobbles. It's got everything I love. I made it out of fusion silco, which is baby llama and um, lyocell, which is a wood pulp kind of a fibre. Nice. And it's just lovely against your skin. There's no irritation or Soft. anything. Yeah. And it's not very pilly. Does it pill much? No. And it just blocks and sits beautifully. No, we've had a lot of success with this. A lot of us have used it. We all yes. love it. I'm on my second garment, actually. Beautiful stitch yeah. definition. Yeah. I'll leave the links below for that yarn if anybody is interested. What was it called again? It's called Corbus by Natasha Hornsby. And the yarn? Fusion Silco. Fusion Silco. Available at Hands On. <laughs> so I'll leave the links below for that. Okay. So let's talk about crochet. crochet. 
I love crochet. My grandmother taught me to crochet and um, my mother was the knitter, so I got the best of both, really. Um, but when I found Janie Crow, um, a beautiful designer in England, um, the, the whole world just opened. It's um, amazing how intricate it can get. Yeah. You mean you've got your basic stitches and it's just the groupings and how you put them together. And that's how I put it. And you were telling me earlier on that really crocheting has um, advanced so much over about the last 10 or 15 oh, years. Oh gosh, yes. So it's a lot different from the granny squares and the scrappy blankets. That, oh, the 70s. <laughs> yeah, and that yeah. our grandparents taught us to yeah. um, knit when we were, or crochet yeah. when we were children. I always remember my grandmother doing the zigzag chevron style knee blankets yeah that's my one memory yeah yeah so that was probably quite um intricate quite crochet work back for then. back then <laughs> <laughs> yeah. show us right. um jane yeah she's either called jane Janie crow or jane crowfoot um she kind of changed her her name a wee bit halfway through but um the books are really beautifully laid Lovely. out um and she eases you through step by step so, okay, so this one is for this is the fruit garden fruit garden yeah. quilt, and I will insert a video with close ups of these quilts, so yeah. um, you will see the finished object. Yeah. So she has it so well done. She can show you all the different colorways and which colors you should choose or color match to. Mm -hmm. um, something that we help out with, and we have yarn packs as well. Yep. Um, but even in the book, it's step by step with photos, and it has the graph. So that you can reference between the two or whichever way you prefer to read your pattern. So you were saying that she literally holds your hand mm. through mm. every square. Yep. And every individual square then just makes up this beautiful blanket yep. that looks like an heirloom piece. Yep. Um, yep. She starts easing you in and then you'll find, oh yeah, I've done leaves. So the next square is not so hard. And then she gets you to the more trickier one. Yep. But by the time you get there, you're actually really confident. And um, it's not such a bad thing. It's such a bad yep. thing. And hands-on makeup um, yarn kits. And yep. I'll show you a picture of those at the end. So even that, um, the hard work of yarn choice is is taken away it's all done for mm. you if you attempt to, to take one of these on do you want to show us um just a quick look at that garden the fruit garden the fruit garden yep we'll just show you a little bit of it made up and i will insert a full picture um for you to see it in all its glory right we um this is one of the blue version one we'll just hold that bit up there so there's four different colorways and you can see that online yeah, but some of, the, some of the crochet is so intricate, it really sorts you out. But they start you off with the nice little ones. It's not a big problem. It's just lovely. So by the time you get there, you're very confident. So by the time yeah. you get to the outside of these yeah. ones. And believe it or not, this one is done in acrylic. Now, acrylic, we all were a bit horrified to think, oh God. But acrylic's come such a long way. It's now soft. It's not shiny or squeaky or Is this 100% acrylic? It's 100% acrylic, but it has a beautiful feel. And we sort of thought it's the joy of making it um, as opposed to having a wool blanket. You know, mm. and um, what we were talking earlier on about beautiful. one of the the advantages of using acrylic wool in these blankets is the vibrancy of colour that you get from acrylic that you can't always get in a wool That's blend. That's very true. And I know a lot of us, like you said, go, oh, I don't knit with acrylic, don't do acrylic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but this feels beautifully soft. Mm. And I suppose the the advantage is, is it is actually a blanket and you probably do want to throw it in the washing machine every now and yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, it's totally washable. It's mm. um a yarn by Fiddlesticks uh, we call Superb 8. And it's a DK weight. Um, and it's just nice to use and... You get the joy of making the blanket without an astronomical price that it would be in wool. So um, you were saying a kit to do this whole blanket mm, was 100, about 189, I think. 189 yeah, some, around dollars there, around there. Yeah. Um, and this, as I said, I'll show you. Uh, um, I will insert a photo of the full blanket. But this is a really big blanket. It would. It is. It would definitely it? cover a single bed, wouldn't it? Um. Yeah. It's yeah. about 1.2 square. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, there's a lot nice. of blanket here. Yeah, <laughs> there is a lot of blanket. There here. is. Yeah, so that is it's just outstanding. So you, this is the same pattern. Yeah, this is the exact same one, different colorway. But you've done this. And in this wool. one I did in, uh, yeah, 
double knit or DK wool. Um, there's a local, we have a local dyers out in uh, North Canterbury called Dreamfire and um, wonderful people and they'll dye up colours and which they did for me. They got me my apricots I wanted and my yellows. Um, so I just wanted to see what it felt like in wool. And so yeah, very, very happy with it. You can do it in wool. <laughs> so you can do it in wool, but honestly, the acrylic is just so much fun too. Yeah. 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 So they're quite fun. It's they're just fun. outstanding. Yeah. It's really, really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. She's got a new one on the go called Spirit of Flora. It's um from Inside Crochet Magazine, and you once a month she's bringing out a, a square. Oh, wow. So, um, and while we're doing that at work too, it's quite fun. But um, it's a so year-long project. But these guys are in the books, and the books are just wonderful to have. And that's book one? Was that her first one? No, Bohemian Blooms was the first oh. one. That's, um, so we started the wrong way around. <laughs> <laughs> Bohemian Blooms. That was the, her first published book one, and it has beads in it, and the beads are um, a lot of fun. You can see them all wiggling along there. But um, beading into crochet was, is a lot easier than what it sounds, and yeah, it was great fun. And there's butterflies, and it's really a really fun project. She yeah. tells you a real story through her books. This one was all based on the Bloomsbury group in England. Um, but yeah, whole wee story running through, which is nice. So even with this one we just showed you, um, yep. she talks about the inspiration yeah. behind it. So there is a story in yep. the first couple of pages about what inspired her with yep. with the certain squares and the colours that she used. Um, so that's really nice as well, yeah. that there's actually a story behind yeah. it. Yeah, William Morris and his daughter Mary Morris were the inspiration behind this this design and the flowers and so forth. Wow. Yeah, the, yeah. So it's really quite good. Really good. So let's have a look at Bohemia. Bohemian blooms. Bohemian blooms. And this is acrylic. No, this one we did in um, merino and cotton and blends, and which was really lovely. We have made yarn packs in the acrylic because honestly, the acrylic looks lovely. It really does. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's the wee butterflies, the Bloomsbury garden. So there again, in the book, she'll start you off with the borders. And I'll just finish close up. There's a bit of the beading. Yeah. Those little white bits there are beads. They're like yeah. little pearls. Yeah, they are. That's amazing. And then um, further down, you've got them all running around there. Yeah. So DK. Um, yep. And you did also say that throughout the pattern, she will take you from a... 3.5 mm -hmm. to a 4 to a 4.5 yeah. mil um, crochet hook depending on the square so so you've got no loose baggy bits so yeah. if it's a stitch that would quite often be maybe a bit loose she's taking you down a needle size yeah to yeah. make it so it's all uniform and it just sits beautifully yeah yeah very well thought out patterns so some of the beads are even in the leaves you can see on that one yeah it's really interesting. Just and outstanding. Yeah, it's and it's good fun. It honestly is. And if I think if I say you you just need to know your basic stitches mm -hmm. and then you can launch into something like this because it'll teach you along the way yep. the different groupings and some of her tricky things. Well. So if you've done a bit of crochet and if you can do a granny square, square you can do this. Wow. <laughs> and I Oh, I am so, so tempted, but I also know that I just love knitting so much and I have so much on the go that I'm really trying to restrain myself from not taking on a new um, hobby. But I really wanted to bring Gail in just to show you um, <laughs> what because, can be done. Yeah. yeah, because when I went into hands-on, I've been into lots of yarn stores and I've travelled a lot and been into to yarn stores in different parts of the world. And I've never seen anything like this ever. Ah. So, um, you know, maybe I've just been living under a rock. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. I love crochet. I always say, well, there's only one stitch to drop. So don't be scared of learning it. Cause, That's you right. Know. One hook and one stitch. Yep. That's yep. just amazing. Yep. And then at the end, I'm guessing that you sew all those squares together. Yeah, you generally they're crocheted together. Crocheted together. Crocheted together and then you block it and do And those. is that a big job? I suppose it would be. There's a lot of squares. Um, it doesn't seem that way because crocheting together is quite easy compared yeah. to sewing with a needle and thread. You're right. Um, You're right. It is because yeah. it's just like a chain, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just, well, kind of, yeah. You're just yeah. doing a single crochet all the way through. 
So okay. I'm going to leave the links below for hands-on website and I'll leave the link for the kits if you're interested in buying mm -hmm. a complete kit, but also the books. So the books you purchase um, individually. Yes. Do Are these available in Ravelry, these patterns? Um, no, I think it's you have to go to her website. Her website, yep. okay. Yep. And it's Jane. Jane Crowfoot or Janie, Janie Crow. Janie she goes Crow, by Janie both. Yeah. So the books, I, uh, books are definitely available at where I work at Hands On. Yeah. yeah. So I really hope that I have shared something with you today <laughs> that maybe you haven't seen before because I hadn't seen them before. And um, I would like to thank you, Gail, for no, coming that's along. Fine. And um, you said you're working on her latest pattern now. Yeah, yeah, we are, we're all busy uh, working on Spirit of Flora. She's Spirit of Flora. Yeah. So when you finish that, I'll have to get you back on <laughs> to talk us through the Spirit of Flora. Um, so thank you very much oh, for coming along. Yeah. And I am now going to insert some videos of these beautiful blankets spread out so you can see them <laughs> in all their glory. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Thanks. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, it's an attempt in to just want to go and buy one of those kits and have a go at them. They're just spectacular. But anyway, so thank you, Gail, and I hope everybody enjoyed that. I will now share with you some of my whips. Um, first of all, I'll tell you, on my last episode, I showed you my friend-to-friend friend friend shrug that I had finished. Um, I'd done this um, in... A commercial brand it's a chunky it's acrylic and I just got that at spotlight which is one of our big box um, craft stores here in New Zealand um, it was called two of hands Hugh and me it's the brand but I'm pretty sure it's pretty easy to come by um, this big chunky yarn. and when I showed you last time I wasn't quite sure how I felt about it um, I kind of I just wasn't sure so I just wanted to give you an update. I've worn it a lot um, and I actually love it. And so we're in winter here now and there's some mornings and evenings where it's just a wee bit cool and not quite cool enough to turn the fire on, but just a wee bit cool. And I've put this on just while I've been popping around the house and doing my knitting and I've loved it. It just keeps me so warm. Um, it's just a really nice transitional piece before you know, it gets too cold at night to, you know, before you turn the fire on. <laughs> so um, I have been asked about it. I did the size three. I did it on a eight mil needle. My gauge is a little bit tight. So if I did another one, I'd probably do it in a nine mil needle. Um, but that's all it's, I really recommend it. And um, I'm so glad I did it and I have been wearing it. So that's a wee update on that. The next whip, um, now this has been a whip for a while, but I didn't make much progress for a while. And that's my La Prairie cardigan by Hohi Lakatali. Um, I really wanted to do a fade. I had yarn in my stash for a fade that I'd bought several years ago. And I love the texture in this pattern and I love the bubbles and it really spoke to me. I cast, I cast it on 
haven't got the date. I cast it on probably a couple of months ago and then I just never got around to doing any of it. I have um, decided, sorry, the side of my head there. Um, it's the sort of project that I'm only comfortable to do when I'm home, al home alone. I do have to concentrate which is great, I love that, but um, it's not going to be a project that I'm going to whip through in three or four weeks. I think it is going to take me quite a bit longer. But I'm at the point where I'm just about to introduce my second colour into the fade. So this is how much progress I've made. It doesn't look much, but there is a lot of knitting in there. So there's a lot of cable um, and knitting through the backs of stitches and bobbles. Isn't it beautiful? So I'm really happy with the progress I've made. I'm really happy with my yarn choice. Um, and I'm not gonna show you all five colors, but I'll just show you as I go. So that's the color that I'm using at the moment. This is 100% merino with 10% linen. And it's um, the yarn comes from a dyer here in New Zealand called Yarn Therapy. And that's the second colour that I'm about to introduce. So it's quite subtle, um, but pretty happy with that. And um, I even suggested that my husband needs to go away on a business trip or something. <laughs> so I've got some consecutive days at home alone so I can really have a good go at it. But I'm really happy with my progress. Um, I'm doing the size three and I am using a 3.5 mil for the main body. The pattern calls for a three mil. Um, I gauge swatched and I needed to go up a size. Needle, which is not unusual for me because I do tend to knit on the tight side. Um, yeah, so that's all I've got to say on it. I have made a little bit of progress and it's one of those things that hopefully every, every episode I've got a little bit more um, and it will be exciting to show you as I work through the color changes. I'm excited about that because like I said, I've never done a fade before. So that's my La Prairie. And since I saw you last, I have, I have cast on here. I know it's here. I try to be organized. <laughs> there it is. Um, I have cast on Miss Arena by Caitlin Hunter. This is my second Miss Arena. I have done one um, in a yellow. Actually, it's here. And I have shown you this one before. So that was just done in a sock yarn, um, a 80-20 blend um it's actually the sock yarn i carry here but i don't have this color at the moment um a sock yarn and the contrast color was a bit of malabrigo that i had in my stash so i saw um another podcaster caster is that the right word podcast um noelle and kelly from knits and pieces and she was wearing one and i just knew i had to have one in that color <laughs> and I had the colour. So I cast this on about a week ago. And I've made some pretty good progress. I, if I don't say so myself. Let me show you that there. And I'm really, really happy. So this main colour, the colour is called Volcanic. And I have this in my range and it's 100% New Zealand Merino and it's a high twist, beautiful stitch definition. I've probably got about 10 colors in this range now um, and I absolutely love it. I love it for its stitch definition, but I also love it because it doesn't fluff and pull too much. Um, it's a really nice versatile yarn and it shows up lace work really well. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to that's going to show up on camera. I know it will once I've blocked it. It's not showing up very well. Um, so that's my main colour. I did cast on another project. You would have seen some episodes ago in this colour. And I wasn't happy with the way it was knitting up. So I unravelled it. 
put the yarn aside and when I, I saw Kelly wearing one of these in a pale yellow with the black contrast, I thought that's what I'm gonna do with that yarn. I, I just loved it. So um, the contrast color I'm using is it's just a commercial yarn and it's a dark, dark brown. So on camera there, it probably looks quite black, but it's not black. It's just a really dark brown. And I just think it looks really good um, with the yellow because it's volcanic. It's got sort of rust and gold and taupe in it. And it's um, I'm really excited about this pattern. The only thing that I will say, my floats look pretty good. I'm catching my floats fairly often. So through the colour work, um, the floats are fine because there's never more than three or four stitches. But between each panel of colour work, there's this cable. And the cable consists of four stitches. One pearl, four cable, and then another pearl. And for me, six stitches and then there's normally one or two each side so eight stitches it's too much to carry the float so i need to catch it and that's actually um i shouldn't say it's not that easy it is easy but it's just time consuming so i have to catch that float while doing a cable the cables i think are every five or six rows so yeah it that's the only thing I've got to say about it is um, you do have to catch your, catch your floats in the middle of a cable. But I think it'll be well worth it. And the, the colour work, um, 50 odd rows of colour work, I think I'm about 38, 39. So I, I, I'm over three quarters, I think, of colour work. Um, so catching those floats, it's not like you've got to do it through the whole garment. It's just that top yoke panel where the colour work is. Um, so that's, that's the one I've been working on the most lately. Um, and I'm really excited for it. Really, really happy with that. So that's my second Miss Arena by Caitlin Hunter. Okay, I'm just going to check my notes. Um, right, so they're my two whips. Now, the only two I've really been, I, I finished this, so this did take up a bit of my time. And then I cast on Miss Arena, and in between, I've been doing a little bit of my La Prairie. But I have got two projects here that I'm keen to cast on in the next few weeks, time pending. So I'm going to share those with you. Now, I've talked about this one before, it's been in my basket as a two cast on project for quite a few months. But tomorrow I am hoping to actually wind the wool. So the, the yarn is still in skeins and I haven't actually wound it into cakes yet. So I hope to wind all my yarn tomorrow. And I know once I've done that, then I'll probably make a start. Um, but it's the Calypso sweater. And this is by Alana from Lupine, which is a yarn store in Auckland. And she goes under the name of Black Cat Knitting Company. Um, now she's done this, I think, in a row and tweed with spin cycle for the color work. So what really drew this to me is that I did have some spin cycle in my stash that really needed to go to a good home. And you've probably, I have talked about this before, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself for anyone that's heard it all before. Um, but what I'm going to use is the Yarn Adelic, which is one of my yarns, which is a sports weight. And I'm going to use the colour Vardy Da. And so in love with that colour. It's a real sort of earthy blue. Well, with bluey brown. I don't even know how to describe it. It's so spectacular. So that's going to be my main colour. And I'm pairing that with these two spin cycles. So I'm going to fade from one, the darker spin cycle, into the lighter one. Um, because that's what I've got in my stash. And I wasn't going to buy any more spin cycle while I still had this. Um, so I am, I've got it all bagged up. 
this is what I do. I put my patterns in a snap block bag with all my yarn and then they sit in baskets as projects that um, are definitely on my radar. So tomorrow while I've got my shop open in between customers and downtime, I'm going to spin all that, spin it, I'm not going to spin it, I'm going to wind it. I'm going to wind all that yarn into cakes and um, that will be my next cast on. Maybe this week. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Um, I've probably spoke about my daughter who's been away and, oh, golly gosh, I missed her. Um, and I need to get used to her being away because I think she's going to move out soon. <laughs> but she's been over on the West Coast um, on her a placement she's a trainee nurse and um so i did get a bit of knitting done i must say but she's home now so that you know we do a lot together which is probably why i miss her so much when she's away um so but i can't complain i'd rather be spending time with her <laughs> um now i this is another one i want to cast on i knitted this I think just when I started podcasting. So it's coming up to two, in August, I've been podcasting for two years. So it's probably, you know, maybe 18 months ago, a bit longer I cast this on. And it's Stripes by Andrea Mowry. And this is the finished object that I did a couple of years ago. And I had all this yarn in my stash and it's um, all from the same dyer. So they all sort of worked well together. I don't think this yarn's available anymore. And I really love the style of this jersey. I love the way it fits me. Um, I, I, It's been on my radar to, to knit another one for quite a while. I don't love the yarn I did this in because it fluffs and pills a whole lot. Um, and I know that's just part of wool and that's what it does. But I've really been keen to um, cast on another one. So I've selected some wool that I'm going to do my next stripes in. And um, I love this yarn. It's the one I just showed you for my Calypso, but it's the yarn Adalic. So this comes in from the UK, from John Arbin Textiles. Um, I love my blues and my earthy tones. So I have selected five colours and, do you know, I sit here and they jump out at me all the time. It's like, knit me, knit me, knit me. And I go, no, no, no. <laughs> and then the, I just, the temptation's too great. I'm sure you feel my pain. But I have selected these five colours. One, two, three, four and five. Can I hold them all up? So I'm going to tell you what those colours are. But I'm going to do these five colours. And that will be enough. I'll only need one skein of each. Um, these are 333 metres. So I've got 15, about over 1,500 metres here. They'll be enough. So this colour is the colour I just showed you that I'm doing my Calypso in. And it's called Bardi Da. So that's the darkest one. Then I'm going down to Of My Hands, which is this beautiful jewel blue. All of these names are named after songs. I don't know the songs ever from my time, I think. This one is called Woman in Blue. And I just love that. Can you see the flecks of sort of like grey in it? Woman in Blue. And then this one is called Nobody Knows. And that's more of an earthy tone, moving away from the blues. And then this one is Ordinary Joe. I knitted my Sprite jersey in that Ordinary Joe. And this yarn is, um, it's soft to skin yarn. Like it's, it doesn't have an itch factor. I can wear this. Um, I also knitted my cravat in this yarn. And all I wear under it is my bra. It it's it doesn't have an itch factor for me. So, um, and I think that's just why I love it. And I think being the sports weight, um, it's really versatile. That's a better look. 
So they're my five colours for Sprite, and I'm going to wind those as well. I will, in case I've got you tempted, <laughs> I'll leave you a list of these colours um, in my show notes under the heading Sprite. I'll leave the link for the pattern and then these yarns. So this is a top-down, in-the-round, yoke-style sweater. Um, and I had a lady in last week who actually bought this wool to do that exact pattern, but she was going to do it all in one solid colour. So that's another option if stripes aren't your thing. So that is my next cast on. Then my next two cast ons. But while I was looking at that, bear with me. These five colours jumped out at me and they're not my colours. But I know a lot of you love your purples. So... I thought I've just got to show you because if you like stripes and you like purples, I want to show you this combination. So this is another five from the Yarnadelic range. And I just thought those five colours looked amazing together. And they're not my colours, but I'll tell you what they are. And once again, I'll leave a list of these five colours in my show notes in case I've got you tempted. So that's um, Canta de Asanka. Canta, Canta de Asanda. Excuse my pronunciations. Um, that one is Hey Moon. Hey Moon. I should show you. That was the first one that I couldn't pronounce. This one is called Waltz. Now, if you love purple, you'd be just like sitting there at the moment going, wow, that is beautiful, because it really is. This one's called Le Fleurs. Le Fleur. And this one um, is called The Beautiful Ones. And this is a nice neutral, but it does have um, sort of pinky undertones. So... I just had to, while I was getting my yarn for mine, I thought I'd just have to share those. And then I thought I'd just share these. This is only a three combination, but I know there's a lot of you out there that like greens. So I just thought I'd show you these three. So this could potentially be another combination for stripes, just in the three. And these are called Harmonium, English Sparrow, and Sunflowers in My Garden. I love this one because you can see the gold popping through it. So, Stripes by Andrea Mowry. If I haven't got you tempted with those, well, I just don't know. <laughs> um, yes. Now I've covered my list. Bear with me. I'm just going to have to tidy up a wee bit so I can go into my next bit. Okay, this next bit is a shop update. I have got some really, um, I have got quite a lot of new colours in my um, yarn bases under my label. And I've got some new products, stitch markers, that I want to share with you. Um, and I also know that some of you don't, um, aren't interested in the shop update. So if you, if this bit isn't um, your cup of tea and you're going to leave I'd like to thank you for staying with me up until now. But if you're just sitting back with your coffee and knitting and enjoy the shop update, I'll show you what I've got. I've talked quite a bit about my high twist merino. Um, and this is by far one of my favourite yarns. But I have five new colours. And two of the colours um, have been dyed um, exclusively for me. Um, so... I sort of said, this is what I want, and she went away and made them for me. So they're the main two I wanted to share with you. This one's called Californian Surf, and it's a variegated type of speckle yarn, but it's white with um, different, different speckles of different blues. Now, I haven't knitted swatches in these yet. Um, I do want to do swatches so I can show you how it knits up, but you get the gist but this one um is fingering weight it's 100 grams and it's 400 meters not beautiful and this one is called um vegas lights 
and this is the same base but it's got a whole lot of pinks and purples look which I think is just stunning so that's the blue and the pink this one here is called New York City Lights and this is just as stunning because it's got your pinks and your purples. Let me turn it around. But it's also got blues. See there. So that's the other one on my high twist base. This one is called Hawaii Beach. And I love this because it is sort of quite neutral with, um, with just some torpy, sandy, bluey sort of speckles in it or variegated. And this one's a bit deeper. Um, I've called this one Philadelphia Nights. It's like a grey base with blues and purples. There. And these are um, ideal for single skein projects like um, the one I wore a couple of weeks ago, the Sylvia Wrap. I'll be giving that away. Um, I am still giving that away. So if you order a single skein of any of these yarns, I'll, I'll include that pattern for free. All of my 100 gram skeins at the moment, mine as well as Yana Dalek and Apple Door, they're all $35. But if you've been buying them off me in the last few weeks, you'll probably notice that the price ticket says 40. A lot of these yarns are going to go up because the raw, the costs have gone up to me and eventually you've got to pass it on. Um, a lot of these yarns are going to go up, but I'm going to keep honouring that $35 price until after Wool Feast next week. Um, so that's another reason to order before the price increase. These four um, are new to my range and these are on the sock base and the sock is 80% merino, 20% nylon. And for all you pink lovers, check this out. <laughs> this is my little ballerina. But this it's beautiful. I, I could wear this colour. I think I'd like to do something in this colour. Maybe another Miss Arena. I don't know. But that's, um, this is actually really beautiful for garments, although it's a sock. But sock. Um, this one's called New Rivers. Now, Gail, who you just met, um, she's knitted this up into a pair of socks and she meant to bring it to show us, but she forgot. But she'll probably give them to me show, to show. This is knitted up beautiful. Look at the colours in that. So that one is New Rivers. This one is a whole lot of fun. It's called Summer Fun. But you've got a lot of pinks. Uh, sorry, purples and orange and bright lime green. Summer Fun. And this one's called Soulmate. And this is a bit of me. It's kind of quite earthy. Sort of browns and greys and golds. So they're in the sock base. So jump online and check those out um, if you are needing to replenish your stash before the price increase. The other products I want to show you are nothing new, but like I've said before, they're nothing new until you don't have them. And they quite often end up down the back of the lounge or um, in the vacuum cleaner. But these are the light bulb these are little light bulb pins. You can see those. There are 40 in here and they're in a, re, a tiny little reusable um, container with a window so you can see them in your notions bag. Really handy. These are all $5. So that's the light bulb pins. These are the rings. And there's 60 in here and there's two different sizes. Three different sizes 20 of each um, but they for sure would fit a small needle like a 2.5 right up to probably a five or a six mil but there's 60 in there and they're beautifully smooth and then there's the lock-in pins once again in a little windowed container um, so the lock-in pins there's 30 in there the rings there's 60 and the light bulb pins, there's 40 and they're $5 each. 
and I have also just restocked up on all my cords, which all co also come in this really neat little tin. And they come in a small and a large. So the small ones will fit, say, a 2.5 mil needle up to a four. And then the large ones I'd recommend for sort of a 4.5 mil up to a seven or eight. Um, so they're my cables and they're $15 on my website. What I wanted to say about these products, to source them and get good prices, I, I've bought in volume. And if you have your own knit store or your local knit store um, wants to contact me, I am open for wholesale inquiries. So you can email me through my website if you are interested in wholesale um, to then retail in your own outlet. So that is my shop update on all of those things. Oh, there was something else. I don't know if I've shown you these. I know I've put them on my social media. I have these leather notion pouches. I think there's about six colors and they are 100% pure leather with a zip. Hand stitching along there. That one's hand stitched. Oh, and they smell so good. They smell like beautiful leather. Um, and these are big enough to fit um, all your little notions, your tape measure, your scissors. Um, it fits all of these. All of these would fit into there. Um, I think there's about six colours available and they are $30. And um, both colours, that's the large bucket bag. That has been redesigned with a lot bigger base, so it sort of self it stands up, it doesn't collapse on itself, and it's full of lots of pockets. So I'm going to have these at Woolfest, but that's the big um, bucket bag. Then there's my signature drawstring project bag, the one with the drawstring top, which is the Volseed. I've got all those back in stock, so I'm going to have plenty for Woolfest next week. But the one thing that is at the moment on its way, and I'm not sure if it's going to get to be by next Friday, um, are these coloured bags that I have had made. Now these, um, once again, they're the bucket style, so they're self-standing and they've got all the big pockets. These come with a matching Notions pouch to match. These are arriving in this, this orange, the green, which I've shown you before, which is like an olive green, bright pink, a bright light blue, and a lavender purple. There's five colours, orange, blue, pink, lavender, pur purple. Anyway, um, they're on my white website under leather. I've called these the Sprite bag. They are coming, they are on their way. And everybody that's emailed me saying that you want one, I will contact you as soon as I've got a more precise ETA date and I will open those up for pre-orders. So if you've been waiting for one of these, please email me and you um, will get first pick of them because there's only five of each coming I think there's only five some of the colors there may only be four um, so there's not big volumes of them coming so email me if you are wanting one of those and you can do that through my website unwindandit.com and I think that's I think I've covered everything that's on my list I really hope you enjoyed my interview with Gail. And if you are a crocheter, I'm sure that I've, you've been inspired. Um, if you're not a crocheter, I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Um, it's nice to see what else is going on. Um, I will leave all the links below to the hands-on craft store, the links for the books, and also the links for the kit, um, if you are interested. And if you are from the Christchurch area, um, I highly recommend you looking out to Rang Rangiora. There are two really good yarn stores out there. There's hands-on, and they also specialise in quilting. So if you're a quilter, you'll know that store. Um, and then there's the Rangiora wool shop. So um, it's worth a drive out there if you haven't been out there yet. Um, so once again, thank you to Gail.
and a big thank you to you for um for making this happen uh because without you i wouldn't be podcasting so thank you i know there's a lot of knitting podcasts out there so if you've chosen to spend the last hour or so with me i really really appreciate it um please subscribe please give me the thumbs up and um yeah tell your friends about it that would be really good uh contact me if you want to come out to see my shop and if you are in the Christchurch area, I really hope I see you next week at Woolfeast. Um, that's at the Pioneer Stadium. Come and say hello. Um, and also a really big shout out to all the ladies at Rangiora. Uh, Rangiora, sorry, not Rangiora, Rolleston. There was a big knit group out at Rolleston and they invited me out there. And, um, and I was super nervous because it was a really big group. Um, but I had a blast. Such a lovely group of ladies. And I just shared with them my knitting story my knitting journey um some of the garments that i've knitted and it was really lovely so hello to all you ladies um out there at the rolleston knit group that was really really special and i hope i all see i see you all at Woolfest. um yeah and now i'm just rambling aren't i blah 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 <laughs> all right thank you very much um stay safe and healthy especially if you're over in that canada US region that's been affected by the uh, the wildfires and the smoke. I don't know if I mentioned before, but a couple of years ago, there were big bushfires in Australia and we had the same thing happen here in New Zealand where the smoke come over and the sky went really eerie and it was, you could smell fire, you know, you could smell it in the air. Um, and you know that's a long way to travel australia to new zealand so um yeah our thoughts are with you stay strong um stay happy and stay healthy thank you and i'll see you all in a couple of weeks bye <laughs>